Hey guys, Janet here with Radiant Wanderings. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and stay a while. And as always, if you find anything in here helpful or useful, please give a big thumbs up. It really helps me out. Today we are doing a Montana Secrets of the Locals episode three, which I'm super excited about. I really need to get you guys more of these. Today we are going to float. I've lived here six years and I haven't floated a river. I think because when I lived when I grew up in the Midwest, I floated a river and it wasn't a very great experience. It was kind of muddy and murky and not my favorite thing ever. So today we are starting in West Glacier and if you need these details, the exact directions and details, click the link below in the description. It will take you to my blog post with all of the details in it. But we are going to float the middle fork of the Flathead River. It starts at West Glacier, goes down to Blankenship Bridge. It's an absolutely beautiful float. You can jump from some of the cliffs in the canyon section, although you definitely want to make sure that you see somebody else doing it there and that it's safe in the area that you choose to jump. Other than that, after we're done floating, I'm going to take you over to the Belton Bridge. It's an old bridge in West Glacier and it is so much fun to jump from. I believe it's 50 foot down and if that's a little bit too high for you then you can uh, jump from one of the rocks there as well. That's a little less distance to fall before you hit that water. So let's get going and I'll show you guys around. If you do bring drinks be sure to uh, not drink too much so that you can drive home afterwards. All right, you guys, so a few things you should know for the float. Plan about three to four hours for the actual float time, depending on if you stop to jump from some of the cliffs and depending on how fast the current is flowing. It's a lot different even from a week in August. So the first time I went was around August 18th and now it is the 24th, give or take. And um, the rapids were a little less and we had to paddle a little more. And I hit my butt a few more times on some rocks, which <laughs> when you see rapids, it's wise just to pick your butt up out of your tube so that it doesn't get hit. Multiple areas to cliff jump along the float if you want to. I took this time, I'm pretty proud of myself because I took this, I have this phone case, this waterproof phone case, and I just took that this time and put my keys in it because last time, <laughs> I hate to admit this, I shouldn't admit this, I give travel tips, but I had a slight lack of communication with my brother-in-law and we dropped a car off at the Lincolnship Bridge and then when we got there I realized we had no keys because <laughs> I failed to communicate with him that he was supposed to bring his key that didn't have the electronics and my key did have the electronics and we didn't have a waterproof case so anyway if you are doing that make sure you <laughs> assess properly who's bringing the keys and communicate that well. Um, also though, with that, I did realize if you are visiting and you only have one vehicle and you're like, oh, we can't do it because we don't have a vehicle to drop off, you can hitchhike your way back if it's early enough in the day. If you start early enough, we hitchhiked, we hopped in the back of a pickup truck of somebody that was just starting and dropping their float off and that worked out well. So bonus, so much fun. I wouldn't necessarily take young kids on a tube. Um, we took teenagers, it was an absolute blast, they loved it, and we didn't wear life jackets and all that stuff. However, the river is so unpredictable, so do whatever you feel is safest for your family. And, you know, safety first, that's the most important. We don't want anybody getting hurt out there. If you are visiting and you don't feel like you can do the tube thing and you don't want to, there are some raft tours that go down there just on a scenic float. It looks kind of boring to me. They're in life vests and helmets and it looks hot. <laughs> However, that water is freezing, so your butt gets numb if you are in a tube and you won't have that problem if you're on a raft. So that's a bonus. But otherwise, if you want something a little bit more exciting, the rafting companies do do a white water rafting tour as well. I think that's on a different river. It goes a different direction. Um, so anyways, all throughout the valley, there are so many. The Swan River, I will put that in my blog post as well where you can access that. That's a fun one. But again, depending on the time of year, Whitefish River is great early season, so probably June, July. And the Flathead River, the Middle Fork that I just did today, you probably won't want to do until August. It's probably a little bit uh, too rapidy and too cold earlier in the season. So just keep that in mind. If you're visiting, I would ask the locals because they're gonna know uh, what's good when and you want safety first for sure. And you don't wanna freeze your butt off, <laughs> literally. So anyways, it is so much fun, you guys. I hope you get to do this. When you visit here or when you live here, make it happen. It is such a great and relaxing experience, especially after a day of hiking. 
um, or biking or all the exercise. It's nice just to pop your butt in a tube and flip down a river and just enjoy the beautiful scenery around you. So definitely give it a go. You might want to bring, even though you're in tubes, if you have a paddle for like a stand-up paddleboard or a kayak, uh, split that in half and bring those. That would really help you out during the dead parts of the river. You can do it without. We've not brought one any time, but every time we think, yeah, we should have brought one, that would have been really helpful. <laughs> Tubes here were sold out by August. So if you're visiting and you're thinking you're gonna buy a tube here, you may not have any luck with that this year. They were sold out by August. We were able to get them in June and July. You could also order them on Amazon and ship them to your hotel or resort if you know that that's something you wanna do. And then um, also remember to order a pump. Order a pump that has a plug-in and adapter for your car, because then you can just blow them up when you're on site and they don't take up all the space in your vehicle. And then when you get there, it's super fast to blow them up with the little pump, that's perfect. And then also if you do bring snacks and drinks, which I highly recommend, whatever kind is your preference, please make sure that you pack those back out and keep the area, the river, and the banks beautiful for all visitors for the future. All right, so let's go check out Belton Bridge. It's 50 feet drop. It's kind of the initiation rite for glacier workers, Glacier National Park workers when they come. It's a blast. This one guy, I should have gotten his name, I didn't. I'm gonna show you him doing a backflip off of the bridge, but he's there all the time trying to help jumpers gain up their courage. All right, you guys, so if you're going on to Belton Bridge, you'll just go straight here onto Old River Bridge Road. It is in West Glacier, so this way is where you enter West Glacier. There's the cafe and all of that, and then this way is the bridge over the river so you just want to turn right before that all right you guys so for belton bridge a few tips definitely make sure all your limbs are <laughs> in when you hit that water i had my arms out and oh i'm so bruised up on my arms i knew that i told my daughter not to have her arms out and then i climbed over that rail and forgot everything that i knew <laughs> uh, you can plug your nose or breathe out when you go in. I breathed out. I actually did get some water in there and was choking just a titch. Nothing, nothing unrecoverable. Definitely when you get there, watch where everybody else is jumping from. We thought they were stupid and jumping from the wrong point. It looks deeper kind of over to the right a little bit further, but one of the locals that jumps there like every night and does backflips off told us no it's actually a bit more shallow there so just pay attention where everybody else is going and coming up from and surviving from <laughs> that's probably where you want to go from as well if you've done it leave a comment below if you uh, have any suggestions or advice that I forgot go ahead and put that below as well I wore chacos it's really nice if you have some sort of water shoe because then it doesn't hurt your feet when you go in otherwise just point your toes a lot of you probably already know this if you jump from something high before. At the end of your day, if you still are, you're probably gonna be starving, so I highly recommend either Gunsight Saloon in Columbia Falls or Backslope Brewing. Both are amazing. Gunsight Saloon usually has live music. They both have outdoor seating and super yum. So try those out. Have an awesome time, guys. I'll see you guys next time.